Welcome to the Finding Sessions podcast, where I believe that having an open mind and a willingness to be honest with ourselves can open up new doors of possibility. Please join me as I share my meditative thoughts with you. Hi there. In this episode, I thought I would have a little fun and maybe try something different. Truth be told, I have another heavier episode that I may release in the near future, and which I suppose I've been struggling with a little. And I thought I'd share something lighthearted this week that made me feel a little bit better as I was working through the other one. I call this episode Coffee Talk, because a cup of coffee represents something that's often experienced to connect us with others, and it's also shared during so many events in our lives. Maybe in hearing my short stories about coffee and a little bit of tea, it may get you thinking about how something as simple as a minute with coffee on the mind can create an opportunity to feel a little nostalgic about moments in our lives. You can almost take a topic like coffee or tea and trace moments of this commonly shared beverage across various phases or experiences we have in our lives. I welcome you to join me as I share my coffee talk or perhaps listen to me spill the tea on some moments of my life with coffee. Maybe you'll even allow yourself a few moments to think about how something in your life, a food, a beverage, or even an activity that somehow filtered its way through the phases of your life. There's something heartwarming in allowing yourself to reminisce once in a while. I woke up one morning last week, walked into the kitchen, and hit the brew button on the coffee maker. And it was so sunny coming into the kitchen that I opened the patio door off the deck and the sun was beating down and the birds were chirping. And I just sat myself on the floor at the opening to the patio door in the sun with the sound of the coffee brewing behind me and the sounds of the birds chirping outside. That moment felt so incredible that I actually ran to the coffee maker and I recorded the sound and then I went outside and I recorded the birds. I thought it might be an interesting background sound for a meditation sometime or maybe even an ASMR audio. As I sat there and I listened to the familiar and comforting sounds, I thought it might be an opportunity to think about the stories of our lives, the less significant memories that we forget about sometimes. A lot of my episodes are about being present in the moment, and I felt very present in that moment. But sometimes while being present, for instance, when you're listening to a pot of coffee brewing, the pleasure of the familiar can take you back to other brief moments in your life. The sound of brewing coffee. Take a breath, sit down, relax while the coffee brews. Here are my little coffee stories. When I was a young girl in the 70s, my mother was a hairdresser and she had a shop in the basement of our house. She also had a little coffee table on which she had this coffee carafe. It was one of those tall white ones with the big red poppies on it. Most of her customers were women in the town, including some teachers. So my sister and I always had to be careful about our behavior because we knew that mom would see them on a weekly basis coffee wasn't home-brewed. It was instant coffee, pretty typical for households near us back in those days. If my sister and I were near, we would often have to make a coffee for the ladies who were waiting to have their hair styled. Little styrofoam cups, powdered milk, and spoons and sugar cubes. That was my first real memory of coffee. I didn't like coffee even early into my 20s. I was a tea drinker. Tried and true. I guess it might have been those British roots. Most people from my hometown drink tea. Brewed red rose or Tetley tea with milk. It was always on the stove. I suppose I could have put the kettle on and created a whole episode on the sound of tea boiling and we could have had a tea talk today. 
but let's keep up with the coffee. When I started law school, I was 21. I remember the first day. I was nervous and not sure what to expect, and maybe I wondered if I would be smart enough. Registration was in the small law building. Everyone was lined up in the main room where there was lots of coffee. I think I was wearing a pair of jeans, and I know I had a backpack for my books. Funny thing, there were actually students there with briefcases. I think they may have been equally nervous and felt the need to look the part for their future career. But what's funnier about that is in seeing them with their briefcases, it made me wonder if I really belonged. The table where the coffee was made was often busy in the mornings before class. I was one of the youngest people in class, so there might have been some seasoned coffee drinkers there. But I'm going to guess that some people just began drinking coffee as they were starting their legal education. I didn't like coffee. I don't even remember if I tried it at the law building, but my roommate, a regular coffee drinker herself, told me that I needed to start liking coffee. In our apartment, we drank tea from a small white corning teapot with blue flowers. It was always full and on the stove. The teapot got me through a lot of studying. My roommate and I would put on a pot of tea, chat for a minute, and go back to our respective bedrooms to study coming out only occasionally to replenish our cups of tea. It's incredible how much tea I would drink, and yet I was still able to sleep. Anyway, my roommate told me it was critical that I needed to learn to drink coffee, so she bought a tin can of sugary French vanilla coffee, the powdered stuff that you mix with hot water, and she got me started on that. That was probably my first coffee. Fast forward to my first day of work articling at a small law firm in my hometown. This was the beginning of my career, but also the beginning of working full days and studying at night for my bar exams. You see, unlike many of the other law students who were given weeks off to study, I was not. I had to study at night after working all day. That was probably when I first started drinking real coffee. Why did I drink it? Not to fit in not to try to be or play the role of the lawyer. I drank it because it was free. The coffee was free and free-flowing, and the secretaries had all kinds of flavors they made. Flavored coffee. It was wonderful. During my articling year, I had to spend a few weeks at the Bar Society in Halifax for skills course. With my newfound love of flavored coffee, I would walk down Spring Garden Road in Halifax, Stop at the local coffee shop, it was called Timothy's, and it's not there anymore, where I would usually get a hazelnut vanilla coffee and bring it to class. I remember how I felt each day, with the breeze on my face as I walked down the street and to my class, coffee in hand. And I remember the excitement of another new experience with new people for that few weeks. Then there was coffee at showers wedding showers, and baby showers. Coffee has a way of showing up at all the big moments in our lives. And then the services, the memorial services, the after-funeral get-together, where we all politely stand around and have a cup of coffee and talk about the memories of a loved ones. Next, coffee with my girls. In my 20s, meeting with girlfriends for coffee and gossip. And in my late 20s, when I moved to Halifax, during those first couple of years, we went out. And it was the days that Sex in the City aired on TV, but only after midnight because it was too risque for prime time. The girls would go out on a Friday night, and we would be home in time to watch the show. And then we would meet for brunch sometimes the next day over multiple coffee refills sharing stories of our own lives, and also chatting about the shocking stories from the show the night before. Keep in mind that Sex in the City was a huge change for those times. For us, it was the first time we heard open talk about sex and the escapades of single adult women. While the content was wild, it created this space, this sense of freedom to talk openly about all matters related to sex and other topics. 
My girlfriends and I thought we were fabulous back then. We thought we were free to talk about everything because sex in the city dissolved all limitations that were previously imposed by the TV censorship of our youth. Those days chatting about the night before, cracking jokes, were so much fun and they bring back very fond memories. Coffee refills kept us talking and sharing. Living alone as a young adult, again, my coffee memories were more vivid during the weekends. On a Saturday or a Sunday, I would brew a coffee, grab the paper from the front step, and sit down and enjoy it. The visual recall of that, I suppose, feels like growing up with coffee. Then we grow into coffee snob. After all those coffee stories, I still drink coffee today, but I only limit myself to one cup, and it must be before noon or I won't get to sleep. Since those early days when Tim Hortons was the main game in town, we began to see a proliferation of Starbucks coffee shops. For me, there was an evolution of feelings about this new shop. First, shock at the prices, and then a warming up to the taste. This was starting to feel like real coffee. So I eventually came to a place where I could no longer even consider drinking Tim's. But those caffeine overlords, mass marketing gurus, convincing all too many young people to consume thousands of calories of sugar through the fancy, flavorful, foamy drinks were annoying. Keep in mind, I don't do sugar or flavor anymore. But then I found the perfect coffee for homebrew. And there's no way that I'll be without it again. I even got my sister on it and we're hooked. And because she can't get it where she lives, I have to buy bags of it at a time so I can supply her with those delicious beans. They're organic, fair trade, and made in Costa Rica. Before my sister and I reached mutual agreement on coffee, I had jokingly referred to her as a coffee snob. When she first got into coffee much later in life, she was very particular about how it was made, and she was very particular about the taste. I made fun of her because I've been drinking coffee for so long that this newbie was far too particular. But to be fair to her, I think she actually is a super taster. She has a palate that requires a higher level of quality. After her phase of coffee snobbery, she's finally come back down to reality to enjoy the simplicity of a good cup that can be repeated over and over. So that ends my little snapshot of life with coffee. But it doesn't end my life with coffee. I hope you enjoyed it. And you may want to take a few moments to reflect and take a trip down memory lane through something reminiscent of the times that you enjoyed, coffee or maybe a cup of tea. Sometimes reflecting and taking time to yourself can mean something as simple as taking a topic and thinking about all the different times you can recall that topic showing up in the background of your life. When I started to write this episode, I couldn't have imagined I would recall all these moments in my life relating to coffee. And I'm sure there are others that might come to mind if I thought about it a little longer. But it's incredible when you take a topic that resonates through time and you allow yourself the pleasure of taking a pause and thinking back to moments in your life. Maybe take a little bit of time for yourself to do something like that. Maybe over a cup of coffee. So now I'll leave you to your day. Thank you. My hope for you is to live in positivity, health, and harmony. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, I invite you to follow the show, share it, and perhaps even provide a review. 
You can also check me out on my Instagram at The Finding Sessions. Mm-hmm.